In this video, we will study the pathological features of prostate carcinoma. So let's start. Firstly, on the gross specimen of prostate carcinoma, you will see that prostate carcinoma arises from the peripheral zone of prostate. This differentiates prostatic carcinoma from benign prostatic hyperplasia which arises in the central zone, but prostate carcinoma arises in the peripheral zones. Secondly, as carcinomas have a tendency to invade their surrounding tissue, so similar to that, prostate carcinoma may have ill-defined margins. Now let's come to the microscopic features of prostatic carcinoma. For microscopic features, you have to discuss the pathological changes under three main headings. First is the architecture in prostate carcinoma, which means how do the overall neoplastic tissue appear on microscope. Second is the tumor cells, that how do the individual tumor cells look like. And third is the grading of prostate cancer, whether it is low grade or high grade. So let's start with the architecture in prostate carcinoma. And for this we will make the comparison with normal prostate gland. You know that normal prostate gland shows convolutions or finger-like projections called papilla. But in prostate cancer, these papillar foldings are lost. As you can see here in this diagram, the glands do not have papillary foldings. Secondly, in normal prostate gland, there is two-layered lining epithelium. But in prostate cancer, there is only a single lining. Thirdly, normal prostate tissue contains fibromuscular elements in the stroma of the tissue. But in prostate carcinoma, the fibromuscular elements are relatively less in quantity because the glandular elements are overproliferating and the surrounding fibromuscular stroma remains relatively less in amount. So you see little stroma and you see abundance of glandular elements. This abundance of glandular elements create an impression that prostatic glands are crowded together very close to one another. So you can see here in this diagram that prostatic glands are present very near to one another. So overall the architecture of prostate carcinoma is such that it shows loss of convolutions and papillary foldings. You see multiple glands crowded together and there is little stroma. Now the second heading which we are to discuss is the cytology of tumor cells. Firstly as I have already said that in prostate carcinoma there is only a single layered epithelium instead of normal double layered epithelium. Secondly the cells in prostate carcinoma stain lightly eosinophilic or dark purple. This dark purple color is due to abundance of ribosomes and rough endoplasmic reticulum which are required by tumor cells to synthesize a lot of proteins in demand. Thirdly, in prostate carcinoma, the tumor cells have prominent nuclei and nucleoli. You know that in carcinoma, the cells are dividing very rapidly. So as a result, you see prominent nuclei and nucleoli. Now let's come to the grading of prostate carcinoma. Firstly, you know that low-grade tumors are those that are well differentiated. In case of prostate carcinoma, the low-grade tumors will mean that the tumor shows differentiation into regular or typical prostate glands. And the high-grade tumors will be that which does not show differentiation to the glands and they appear only as sheets of cells or individual cells. Now applying this basic information, we use a well-defined specific system for grading of prostate carcinoma that is called Gleason grading system. And this is very important both from examination point of view as well as practical point of view. Basically, the Gleason grading system comprises of two steps. In the first step, you see multiple regions of the slide under microscope and grade each region on the basis of degree of differentiation. The most well differentiated regions are given grade 1 and most undifferentiated regions are assigned grade 5. And the tumors with intermediate grades of differentiation are labeled grade 2, grade 3, grade 4. Now in the second step, you add the grade of most frequent region which you see in the microscope and the grade of second most frequent region which you see under microscope. The addition of the grades of two most frequent regions is called Gleason score. Now it is obvious that a minimum value of Gleason score is 2 and the maximum value can be 10 because the lowest grade is 1 so 1 plus 1 will be 2. Similarly the highest grade is 5 so 5 plus 5 is 10. And the significance of Gleason scoring is that the lower the number of Gleason score the better the grade of tumor will be or the lower the grade of tumor will be. And such tumors being well differentiated have better prognosis as compared to high grade tumors. Now let's revise the morphological features of prostate carcinoma. Firstly, as far as the architecture is concerned, you see loss of convolutions or papillary foldings, you see multiple glands crowded together, and you see little fibromuscular stroma. Secondly, you see that tumor cells are arranged in a single lining instead of two-layered epithelium, and the cells are lightly eosinophilic or dark purple with prominent nuclei and nucleoli. Thirdly, for grading, we use Gleason grading system in which we add the grade of most frequent appearing region of microscope and the second most frequent region on microscope. 
the addition of these two gives Gleason score the minimum value of which can be 2 and the maximum value of which can be 10 and the lower the value of this Gleason score the better the tumor prognosis will be because such tumors are low grade or well differentiated this concludes the pathological features in prostatic carcinoma